Hey guys, Matt Neufeld here with Explosive Edge Athletics here in Edina, Minnesota. We're starting a new little video series here all about plyometrics. What they are, how we can use them, how you can implement them in your training, and what benefits you can expect to see from them. This first video is called What Are Plyometrics and Why Do We Need Them? It's kind of a broad uh, general introduction into what plyometrics are, what kind of benefits they offer, how they differ from other kinds of training, and all that kind of stuff. Later on, we'll get into some specific examples on types of plyometric exercises you can use, how to safely use them, and how to use them in your daily routine even. Uh, but to start off, plyometrics are a method of training that were originally developed by Dr. Yuri Burkashansky, but the term plyometrics was actually coined by legendary U.S. track and field coach Fred Wilt. And plyometrics are a method of training that focuses on increasing your movement efficiency through greater utilization of your stretch to shortening cycle and also through elastic potential energy utilization in your connective tissue and your muscles. Now, when most people think of plyometrics, they think jump training. And there are some significant differences between what most people implement into their workouts as jump training and what true plyometrics really are. The first and most important distinction is the concept of shock. Plyometrics are meant to deliver a shock to your system and increase load to your system. And the difference between that and jump training, for example, jump training, most people jump up on a box. In plyometrics, commonly we will jump off of a box in order to elicit more of a shock, greater eccentric force, and teaching the body how to cope with that force. The second big difference is in execution time, and this is not only just decreasing your total movement time with whatever motion you're training, but specifically decreasing the amount of time it takes your body from absorbing that eccentric load and turning it into concentric motion. Decreasing that amortization period is very, very, very crucial to plyometric exercises. A third big difference are the neuromuscular differences that your body kind of undergoes when you're doing plyometric exercises. Greater cross-sectional area of your muscles tends to get recruited when you're doing these kind of explosive movements. Also, through doing these movements over and over again, you gain all kinds of movement efficiency and neuromuscular efficiency in which muscle groups are recruited and the timing in that they're recruited and all kinds of benefits like that. All of these factors of plyometrics help you to be more explosive, move more athletically, and probably most importantly, teaching your body how to deal with these increased loads and this kind of shock that's placed on your body during competitive sport. Now, becoming more explosive in these movements is all about maximum force over minimum time. And that minimum time part just becomes huge when you're doing plyometrics. I mentioned that transition from eccentric load to concentric motion being super important. And one of the big things that does is it helps prevent what we call energy leakage. Quick example, you're jumping down off a box, absorbing that eccentric load, leaving the ground into a jump, doing drop jumps, something like that. If you allow yourself to elongate that contact time with the ground, all that elastic potential energy you're gaining from your eccentric motion is lost. It ends up being dissipated through whatever joints happen to be cushioning your landing. But by decreasing that movement time, that amortization period, you're able to utilize all that elastic potential energy that's given to your body by that shock, by that increased load. So by not leaking that energy, being more efficient with our contact time, quicker with our movement time, all that elastic potential energy goes into our movement rather than being dissipated, being wasted, or even potentially causing injury and making your movements unsafe. Now, this elastic potential energy usage is incredibly important through all kinds of different athletic movements. When that extra load is placed on your body, how you use it can define the measure of success of your movement or just your general athleticism. Like we said, using it effectively and not dissipating it, doing this over and over and over in workout teaches your body how to cope with these extra loads and this extra shock. Now, why is dealing with this load especially good? One, it increases the amount of mechanical energy we're able to use in our movements, and because of that, decreases the metabolic cost of our movement in a lot of cases. In running, for example, you're 
efficiency and mechanical efficiency in using all this kinetic energy you're already generating just by moving is incredibly important. And the more of that you're able to utilize, then the less metabolic cost of your movement and the more efficient you become. Also, with all that extra mechanical energy going into your movement, your overall working effect of your movement will tend to be higher because you have all this extra force that you've never been able to use before going into your movement, making you more explosive, making you more athletic. And you, you can see huge benefits from this type of plyometric training into your just general athleticism and sports performance. Now, the transfer of ability from doing plyometric exercises is just huge into the realm of whatever your competitive sport may be. You track football, basketball, baseball, there's huge specific sport applications to all of these. We gave the example of running, efficiency in that contact time, using that elastic potential energy from your eccentric motion to the concentric launching phase can be huge. Making a cut in football can be huge. When you're coming to a stop that quickly and changing direction, that's a lot of shock and a lot of extra load placed on your body that you don't see in normal everyday movement. By mimicking that kind of shock and plyometric training, teaching your body how to cope with that more effectively, your body will be much more efficient in absorbing all that force and redirecting it in an explosive manner that can make you more competitive. We gave the example of box jumps. Transfer that to, per se, in basketball. A jump stop to a jump shot, teaching your body how to deal with all that eccentric load and as quickly as possible turning it into concentric motion, making you more powerful, maybe harder to defend at the top of your jump shot. So there's all kinds of sports specific application to doing these kinds of plyometric exercises. Basically, to sum up our intro video here, plyometrics are a great exercise that help your body deal with the increased loads and shock that are placed on your body in a competitive sport environment. Dealing with this shock and using it in the right way instead of letting it be dissipated and leaked can help translate to more athletic and more explosive movement and safer movement. Hopefully you enjoyed the first video. We'll be back with a couple more teaching you how to use plyometrics and implement them into your workout safely. Until then, this is Matt Newfield from Explosive Edge Athletics here in Edina. We'll see you later.